in the hood with it. Welcome back to the Collective Clips where you already know we get it in. But before we get it in, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Put your notification bell on all. Ding. So that way you're directing the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. We're going up on this channel and it's all because of you. And for that, I'm very humbled. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> we've talked about this interview with the first Norteño ever to pull up to No Jumper. Allegedly, right? Lazy Boy from San Jose, um, and Adam had a lot of cool questions to ask, right? In Adam 16 fashion, a little uh, bait and catch, little uh, throw it back when you're done with it. It's all for the views, man. We see it's plain and simple. It's right there written in stone. It's etched in stone. That's just what people do, man. You can't be mad at a motherfucker trying to hustle. You got to be more mad or more just, it's laughable, man, the way people fall into this, this bullshit, right? Now, I could see that when this guy, Lazy Boy, pulled up, he was a little nervous. He was a little apprehensive. There was nerves there, right? And I don't think he was nervous being in Southern California. I don't think so at all. I think he was more so nervous than being on a big podcast for the very first time. Um, just to know that you're finally recognized for your accomplishments, your achievements, and your talents. And isn't it a fucking trip how this is supposed to be a platform, this no pumper. is supposed to be a platform to push out young and new and raw talent, man, to introduce them to the world, okay? Now, there's been a lot of content creators that have podcasts from Southern California, um, say American Cholo, right? Um, who was kind of not discrediting this interview, but was kind of upset about it because he felt somewhere deep down in the realms of his heart that maybe Lazy Boy should have pulled up to a Southern podcast and expressed himself. Maybe that would have showed more unity, more uh, uh, canalismo, more, you know, uh, uh, not less uh, segregation between two groups, you know, the North and South. And I believe he's right. Absolutely. I, I agree with American Cholo on this one. Maybe uh, Lazy Boy should have pulled up to a Southern podcast, man, just like Goto's did, just like several others did, man. And, you know, sit down and talk about it. But at the end of the day, he chose to go with no pumper, whether it was for a monetary gain or it was for more national exposure, whatever the case may be, right? But I think this interview did more de more bad than, than good, more harm to the raza because we've been taking steps as gente, as people, not only in the gang life, but as people um, to put aside differences between Northern and Southern California, to put, in, put aside that line that's drawn in the sand, to blow it away, right? And it seems like when you take two steps forward, you take three steps back. And that seems what's happening right here with Adam. He chose his words and he chose his wording and the questions that he did to kind of cause chaos, to kind of keep that fucking uh, uh, beef flowing. And it's unfortunate that people are allowed to do this. Master manipulators are allowed to fucking sit down with a real gang member, someone who's really about that life, allegedly, right? Someone who's really with the business and to ask him questions that are only going to stir conflict and confusion. Now, one of the questions he asked that was fucking mind blowing to me and I thought shouldn't have been answered, period, was do fucking Southsiders, are they still in the Norteño uh, 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 ways? You know, are they still in the ways of the Norteños when it comes to rap music? Now, look, you can't have your big ass chocolate cake and eat it too. You can't. For so many years, I've went through this and I've answered this question. For so many years, I've been called a Mayatero. I've been called fucking, you think you're black. Your swag, your whoop de whoop, not only by guys from Southern California, but by a lot of other people, even from people from Northern California. Like, hey, you're doing way too much, homes. You watched Boys in the Hood way too many times. Fucking, why are you watching Menace to Society? You should be watching American Me, SA. All this, right? Like, I forgot my culture and like I ain't Mexican just because I ate a fucking piece of Popeye's chicken. Now, trip out on this. Hey, what I do and how I carry myself and my swag in particular doesn't make me any less Mexican than someone else. But understand that I know my history. I know my history. I know my cultural roots. I know where I'm from, where my family comes from. And that's always going to be first and forefront with me. Okay, now, somewhere along the line, I believe that a little bit of people lost their way. You know, this hip-hop generation, this generation we're in now with these tight-ass, skin-tight pants and these funny-ass fucking haircuts have taken over. And we just have to adapt to it. Now, not all youngsters do that. Some are smooth with their groove. But a lot, oh boy, right? They've gotten all fucked up. Now, Lazy Boy has his own swag. He has that Northern California Stilo. What's that Northern California Stilo? You know, it's a little bit different. Yeah, some call it fucking urban. Some call it hip hop. Some call it uh, acting black. There is no way to act black with me because I'm rolling on the motherfucking world with the strap on the side of me like Spice One. There's no way to act black. 
okay? You are a product of your environment. You do what you do, I say, and that's just it. But for generations, a long time, guys from Northern California have been classified as acting black, right? Now, Adam asked the question, are this, you know, what do you think about uh, this hip hop, you know, culture? What do you think is going on here with the Southsiders North? And of course, Lazy Boy answered in the most frivolous way. He answered, he said, you know, I mean, that he believes Southerners are stealing Norteño style. Why? They're elevating their game, bro. You know, you got to understand that a lot of guys in Northern California do fuck with the blacks pretty heavy. Whereas a lot of guys in Southern California don't or they do. There are some that fuck with them heavy. They're from the same hood, same areas, you know. Black and brown have always been, whether they're at war, whether they're at guerra, whether they don't like each other, there's always been uh, some similar, uh, you know, conflict there. There's always been some similar oppression that they've went through. You know, not everybody um, has it all bad. Everybody has it all bad, if you know what I'm saying, right? Read between them lines. Knowledge you can't get in college. So when he said that the Southsiders are acting uh, uh, like Northaniels, no. And what it's becoming now is everybody doing what it takes to make that bag. You know, in the hip hop, there's a certain style, a certain stilo that's out there now. And you have to follow that pattern and follow that course. Now, it's good if you can go outside of the box, like say the Mexican OT, still hold on to his Mexican roots, yet at the same time spinning like fucking Kevin Gates, right? If you could do that, well, then you're fucking uniquely talented. But most people can't. So most people go with the trends. It's called a trend. Now, the Bay Area, Northern California, has been known for being a trending place, for setting that trend, setting that swag, whether it was the Thiz movement, whether it was fucking Shake Your Dread movement, whatever it was, right? The hyphy movement, they've always been on the forefront. But let's take it down south. In LA, Los Angeles, Southern California, they set the trend for that Cholo vibe, for that Cholo Stilo, for the low riders, six fours, drop tops, Raider gear, Raiders, all that, okay? NWA, Ice-T, all these guys from Southern California set that gangster music trend. That's a fact. Northern California didn't steal it. They adapted to it. I don't believe Southern California Sureños, in fact, Southsider rappers are fucking stealing any style. I believe they're adapting to the style and seeing what makes the money. Okay. Most people that listen to hip hop music, there's everybody listens to it, but most people, it's a, it's, it's a black thing. Let's just keep it real. Okay. Hip hop is black traditionally. Everybody supports it. Everybody likes it. If you like it, you like what you like. You say, I like country music sometimes. Oh, literally, go Blake Shelton, right? But at the same time, I understand that, you know, people are going to look at me like, you should be listening to salsa. I don't want to listen to salsa or reggaeton or fucking uh, 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 corrido today. I want to listen to fucking Dwight Yoakam. That's just what it is. Or Megadeth. Um, we could listen. Music is music. It's a universal language to each their own. But I don't say, oh, look, fucking Metallica cut their head. They're trying to, act, they cut all their hair. They're trying to act black. No. Haircuts, tattoos, swag doesn't mean you're acting like another gang member or, or trying to copy another gang. It just means you're adapting to a fucking style. And the style is hip hop. Now, the reason why Norteños have a certain stilo about themselves, like I said, they fuck with the blacks tough in Northern California, in the Bay Area, in the Valley. You know, so the blacks having been innovators and pioneers of the hip hop community, not only them, though, the B-Boys, the, the Puerto Ricans, they've all been involved, too, in New York City. That's where it started anyways. So everybody's trying to act like New York now. West Coast trying to be East Coast, right? We could say we could break it down. All that question does is cause dissension. And the way Lazy Boy answered it didn't seem right. Didn't sit right with me. Um, that Southsiders, did they steal the Norteño style? Nah, ain't no one stole nothing, Holmes. If anything, you know, what style did you steal? And I'm not fucking disrespecting Lazy Boy in any, in any sense because he has a unique style. And I believe that, you know, that interview did more bad than good. And I'll tell you why. Um, when you ask any questions that involves gang members or, or causes dissension to different groups, what you're doing is you're fucking pushing that. You're putting that wedge in there, hammering it in. And that's what Adam's known to do. Cause conflict, chaos for the views. Uh, for the clips, for the sound bites, or for whatever he does it for, for money. At the end of this, it's all about sh money. That biggest bag he can get. You know, lemonade, that cool, refreshing drink. He's trying to drink lemonade while you guys drink water with lemon in it. That's just what he does. Okay, facts. So that question right there threw me off. And the way Lazy Boy answered it, like the Southsiders are stealing the, the Norteño style, that's furthest from the truth, man. Um, you know, I have, I've done uh, videos in the past where I'm saying you can't tell like the upstater Southsiders from Northaners in some instances, 
But that's like in the Bay Area. In the Valle, the Central Valley, San Joaquin Central Valley, the 209, you can tell right off the top. But it doesn't make it bad. It's not a bad thing because about those bald wearing Ben Davises in a blue flannel. It's not bad if you're bald wearing Ben Davises with the red flannel. It's all the same damn thing, just the color difference. That's it. Now the mentality, the cause, what you're fucking striving for. Yes, there's different rules and regulations, different reglas, different motivational factors there. But at the same time, we're all Mexicans just trying to get by and survive. Period. The questions I believe that would have been asked and answered more correctly, more politically correct would have been on American Cholo. Because he does, one thing I can respect about that dude, even though we don't care for each other, but one thing I can respect is he asks the questions, the hard questions, cut and dry, straight up. You know, but he doesn't try to fucking bring people or make people fucking uh, uh, say things that they shouldn't say on the internet. Facts. You know, Adam don't give a fuck. You think he cares about the Mexican community? Hell nah. If anything, man, he laughed about it. He chuckled. He went back, got him. <laughs> got him. Lena, damn, that's a big ass black dick in your shit. That's what he did. Okay, that's what he does. So you got to recognize that. So no, the North is not better than the South. The South is not better than the North. People are always going to say that. Gangbangers, people that have never been on the yards, don't know what's up, are always going to fight for their people. And ain't no, that ain't nothing wrong with that. You're always supposed to think your people are that one. Okay, but remember, Holmes, there's that other side and you got to respect them. Put some respect on their name. Facts. Gun, why do you always jock the Southsiders and show them love? I don't show them love and jock them, homes. I show them respect as a man because I respect the people that I toiled in the soil with for so many years. People that I fought against, you know, the, my fucking worthy adversaries. In fact, in more cases than one, bro, if, if it wasn't, if it was left up to them, I'd have been dead a long time ago. Them Vatos had plenty of air and opportunity to handle me. And man, they showed me the way. A lot of them showed me love, respect. And let me wig on a few instances, man. And I got to respect them for that. And I respect the Norte as well. Because the Norte was a big part of my life, man, for a long time. And I know what it is, man. I was a homie. I know how the homies feel. Straight up. I know how Lazy Boy feels right now. I know how he's been laced up and what his thinking is. You know, we've been bred and thought and, and, and indoctrinated to think the South Side ain't nothing like us. And they've been thought to breed. They don't even know who the fuck we are. So Valtos are not stealing anybody's swag or anybody's style. That's that's furthest from the truth. Now, Adam could have whoever he wants on his podcast. That's a fact, right? And to be totally honest with you, albeit that this is the first, I think they pushed this narrative as the first Norteño ever to be, you know, on No Jumper. But he's not the first one. There was another one that preceded him. But I'm not going to speak his name or even tell you who he was. Um, but there was a Balto that was there, but he was smart enough to not put that gang aspect out there to not use the label active Norteño. Now let's, let's look at it this way. Instead of Adam saying, Hey, this is lazy boy. He's a rapper from, uh, San Jose. Uh, let's talk, let's talk about it. Right? No, the label that was put on it to get everyone fucking in. It was first active Norteño ever on no jumper. And he asked him this question. How does it feel to be the first active Norteño? First of all, you're fucking saying he's active, eh? You know, if you got to use the word allegedly. Don't get this bottle validated when he gets locked up. You know, I don't know if he's active or not active. I don't know what he is. Allegedly, Holmes, maybe, maybe not. Gang questions shouldn't be asked when it comes to a podcast or an interview because you're trying to put the man in a motherfucking crippler, a crippler crossface. You're trying to put him in the twister. You know, people don't understand whatever you say on YouTube and in social media counts inside. You know, when you're asked about the opposition, you respectfully decline to answer those questions. Hey, bro, I ain't got nothing bad to say about that gente. Straight up. Because what you can do out here is cause a conflict of interest in there. And in there counts. It really does tremendously, right? That's just it. So anyways, with Adam spitting uh, the knowledge he definitely didn't get in college and asking these questions, I ask you this. You know, for those of you that watched the interview, and I know a lot of the Rasa has, and some people don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? This guy um, is a youngster that I don't believe has even been to prison, has even been part of that life like that. It's just a rapper and it should have been just uh, sticking to rap. You know, the enemy, the, the Southsiders, the North thing should have never been brought up in this. That's a bad look. That's causing more uh, dissension for the people because there's a lot of people that look for to no jumper and American children. These certain podcasts, man, um, you know, for answers to see the canalismo, to see how we're progressing as a people. You know, we're constantly trying to uh, uh, better ourselves as gente, as a raza, 
right? We got gangs. We understand that they've been around. I've been a part of them. I lived that life. So I understand it's hard to stop that. It ain't probably never going to stop, right? But um, we can't all just get along. Can we all just get along? Fuck no, we can't. That just ain't never going to happen in life, especially with Mexicans. Mexicans, hey, we're bitter. We don't like to get along. We love fighting, right? We love bullshit, bullshit. We love it, right? So that ain't never going to happen. But when you're not that ethnicity, when you're not a Mexican homes, who are you to be asking about Mex Mexican stuff? Just like I'm not a wood, right? So I wouldn't go on there and ask fucking uh, hoop him up Wes Watson. Hey, brother, did you really stick your whole fist in your ass? I would just assume he does, right? I'm not, you know, there's just things that I don't put out there because that's not my people to do it. You know, I've had a lot of blacks get at me. Hey, gun, stay out of black business. Blue face is ours. Blue faces for the streets. You know, once you put your shit out there publicly, now you've opened the doors to be asked questions by the public. Understandable. But there's just certain things you can and cannot ask when it comes to any type of gang things. Like, hey, homie, where are you from? You know, hey, if someone from a different group asks you where you're from, it's on site. It's off the hook right there. That's a prison rule. That's a street rule because that's a form of disrespect. How dare some other motherfucker ask me where I'm from? You know, I believed in that so truly that I got a 14 tatted over my eye when I was down south in Southern California in the youth authority, just so nobody asked me questions. If you're going to fucking get off, just get off. You don't like me anyways. There's no sense in us talking. As I grew up and grew out of that shadow, I understood. Hey, bro, what the fuck am I doing tattooing my face like a baboso? What am I doing trying to gangbang on people um, that might or might not like me? You know, I assumed they didn't. And plus, I wanted to be cool, right? So I did that. Now I wear my hat. So I'm like, you know, my shit's all, I mean, they scraped it off anyways with a screwdriver, but still I wear hats and, and I try to minimize the bullshit when I'm out. I wear long sleeve. I'm not trying to attract attention because I don't want people to hit me up and ask me where I was from or, or anything like that. Cause I'll tell them, homie, I'll tell them, yeah, I was a North Daniel. I'm not anymore. I'm not none of that. What I am is Brown though. That's what I'll always be, whether you like it or not. And I don't stink. I smell like eternity and three flowers, even though I'm bald. That's just what it, I always take a thin layer and just, just for the smell. Heinous love it. That's knowledge you can't get in college. Anyway, so yeah, with the, you know, do I think that this interview was a good thing? Not really. Not really. Does it help Lazy Boy's career? Mm -mm. Not really. I mean, more people know who he is, but, but people ain't tripping off his music. They're more watching to see if he fucked up and said anything bad about the Southsiders. And for people like Chito Ranas, let's talk about Chito, the frog, Bofo, right? Um, Sapo, the frog, um, constantly disrespecting North Daniel. Someone asked me, why does he do that, bro? He, I thought he's about getting his money and getting that bag and taking himself out, out of outside of the box. He's talented. Why, why does he constantly do it? Because he's from up North, man. Quietly as it's kept, he's from up North, you know, and, uh, he has that, that way about him where those are his enemy, man. He's fought constantly. Is it a good thing? No, man. Should he be disrespecting dead folks and their families? Absolutely not. That's not cool. Ain't nothing cool about that. But at the same time, I understand why he does it because he's toiled in that soil. So he feels a certain way. And if he wants to express it in his music, that's his music. Is it cool and, and the right thing to do? No. But hey, no one going to tell that youngster nothing. He's doing his thing. And if they are, then I'm sure they're going to do it a whole different way. And that's just it. So, um, I believe Lazy Boy went on that podcast with good intentions to just sell his music, man, to let people know who he is. And I commend him for pulling up, <laughs> clapping. He did that, man. You know, and a lot of people were hating on that. Oh, why did he pull up to Southern California? Come on, bro. There's, it's a fucking, I've went to Disneyland many times. It's not a big deal. He didn't go disrespecting or threatening anyone. Okay. He was just a youngster that went up there to try to, uh, you know, push his music. And Adam spun it. Adam spun it like I knew he would. And I watched a little bit of the fucking, uh, you know, the interview, and that was enough for me. I almost threw up because I could smell the fucking wanga la wanga la coming through the fucking, uh, through the camera, right? Could she smell it? Lena is different. Anyways, with that being said, man, what do you guys think? Did this do more harm than good? Um, I seen American Cholo that he got all hyphy and mad. He's like, fuck that. I'll never invite a northerner. I ain't doing nothing. Whoop de whoop. In fact, I ain't fucking with him no more. Damn, he was pissed, right? Um, and I think he was more so pissed because he knew in his heart he would have done a better job. And he's really, truly trying to bring the rasa together. I believe that, man, um, wholeheartedly. And I recognize and, and that's just a real thing to me. Now, do I like him? No. Fuck no. Does he like me? Hell nah. Right? We got a history. But at the same time, man, uh, I'm not a fool to not recognize game. Game recognizes game. And, uh, you know, if you're trying to build unity. But you got to understand, American Cholo Gil and everyone else, 
A lot of these young Northerners ain't trying to build unity, bro. A lot of these young Southerners rappers ain't trying to build unity. They're trying to do their thing and get their bag, bro. It's all of us, all of the people that watch that want some type of unity. There's a lot that don't, you know, so it shouldn't even be about that. It should be more so about, you know, pushing their narrative and getting their bag. But at the same time, you don't cause conflict and tension. And that's what I believe Adam did. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming and let me know what do you think. Was it more good than bad, bad than good? Or who gives a fuck, you know, at the end of the day? It is what it is. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, struggle, strive for what I honestly and truly believe in. And that's the betterment of all people. E forward or C. Fucking Wes Watson had his hand up his ass faster than a rabbit gets the gun.